Well, hello, I'm Kevin Cameron. I'm here in my little shop. It used to be in a cellar, and I was then known as the cellar dweller. But uh, what I want to talk about today is stress concentration and failures that may result from it. This is the upper crankcase of a, uh, an early 70s 500 Kawasaki triple. The model was H1. And these were built into a racer called H1R, which became available in 1970 and 71. It was a 500cc engine making about 75 horsepower, which is these days nothing to write home about, but in the 1970s uh, there was a lot of writing home. Here's the cylinder head with the spark plug in the center, and it is held in place by these studs engaging with these sleeve nuts. They screw onto the studs as follows. You torque them up with a torque wrench when you assemble the engine, and there's a lot of tension in these steel studs. When we first took our new H1R to the races, we broke a stud every weekend. It broke right where the threads begin. And the reason for that is called stress concentration. Here you have a shank which is nearly eight millimeters in diameter and the way we're taught in engineering school to think about this is vertical lines of stress trying to pull this stud apart as we tighten these nuts up and when you get to the threads all those lines of stress in this eight millimeter stud have to neck down to something more like 6.8 millimeters or less in the threaded portion. And as those lines of stress suddenly neck downward, they concentrate right at the edges where this first thread begins. And that stress concentration was breaking the studs. Now, when you break one of four studs holding down one cylinder, the head gasket, which normally sits between the top of the cylinder and the underside of the head is no longer properly clamped in place. You hear a high frequency squeak and you've blown the head gasket. So my question was, what do I do now? I could put new studs in and hope that they won't break. Might have been a bad batch, a favorite theory. I decided to try classical method. The classical method is to turn down the thick part of the stud until it is as slender as the thin part so that the lines of stress all go straight. They aren't trying to shoulder their way past a sudden reduction in diameter. This is a connecting rod bolt from an unknown BMW, but you'll notice that the middle part of the bolt is necked down so that the threads stick up from it. They had the same experience. They broke bolts. They learned to look in the engineering book and see where it says, don't be a dummy, turn the center of the stud down. So that's what I did. I took all the studs out and I turned the middle down to a smaller diameter using a round nose tool so that the transition at the ends would be smooth as it is in the case of this BMW connecting rod bolt. We never had another stud break. The idea of stress concentration is valid throughout engineering and you'll find that many highly stressed parts have very graceful organic shapes like this connecting rod bolt. It's no accident that trees flare out to their roots gradually. Nature's been experimenting with things like this for a billion years. We have to uh, pack it all into our comparatively short lifetimes. Anyway, that's how I learned about stress concentration in cylinder studs.